Well, hello there, minders. Welcome back to the Mind of Watercolor. Well, you know, uh, the fantasy piece that I did a couple weeks ago was a big hit, and I'm really, really happy that it was. Uh, I just had such fun doing that. But one of the aspects of that piece was the way the light sort of pooled uh, theatrically in the center, and I wanted to explore that some more. And if you watched that video, you know I also talked about uh, doing it on good cotton paper and a good cotton sketchbook. So that's actually what I'm doing here. Decided to use this uh, Fabriano, this little Fabriano Artistico sketchbook. Uh, by the way, if I can find the link for the guy that sells these on eBay, I'll put it in there. I don't know if he's still doing it or not, but just a guy on eBay that uh, he and his wife put together these little Fabriano Artistico sketchbooks. And they're not uh, too expensive. But regardless, uh, you can get that paper just like you can get arches. And uh, it's it's great paper. Uh, probably second to arches in terms of its popularity among serious watercolorists. It's just a great paper. So, yeah. 100% cotton, Fabriano Artistico. And I'm just going to sketch a little scene. Now, it's not necessarily fantasy per se. I mean, I'm using some brighter colors than are normally realistic. And I designed these uh, little rocks sort of in the center. Uh, it's going to be very similar in light effect as to what I did with the fantasy piece a couple weeks ago, in that I'm imagining an opening in a little forest setting somewhere where light is streaming through and you have a little pool spotlight effect from the sunlight streaming in. So uh, I want to be able to capture that fall off of light. I'm arranging the trees in the back in sort of this vertical, almost a stylized design of all these vertical tree trunks. I just thought that was a neat design element you have this stand of trees all kind of going vertically in the background but uh, i'm going to try to throw some light on those and on the rocks in such a way that it looks like they're in a pool of light now most of this just as with the fantasy piece i did is going to be transparent watercolors i'm, I'm working with a schminka palette uh this is my other uh, gouache but actually I have several several gouache palettes but this is a hybrid palette of Schmincke, uh transparent watercolor and M gram gouache so I'm going to see again how much of this I can put in in transparent watercolor and then we'll go back and finish it off in gouache so what I'm doing right now is negative painting those vertical tree trunk shapes in the background and after I get all of this uh, covered in paint, I'm just going to start a vignette process. By vignetting, I mean just darkening the outer edge and pulling the light into the center, or your eye focused on light into the center on the rocks and some of the foliage. So right now I'm just generally filling shapes and adjusting value. I'm trying to push some of those tree trunks back and let some of them stay forward. And now I'm just going to generally uh, paint in the rocks. And I, I will be able to, as you, you'll see as I go along, uh, get quite a bit of light play just from uh, transparent watercolor not really that difficult to do on the rocks since they're larger shapes with sort of facets, facets facing the light, facets facing away from the light. So that's what I'm doing here. And I think this piece could work just fine, the transparent watercolor piece, but I'm going to push it, take it a step further. Uh, you'll see eventually with some gouache. Just 
glazing in now, some deeper shadows on those rocks. Simple subjects like this, uh, one you're comfortable with, drawing and painting are great ways to study an effect, whether it be certain kinds of washes, certain light effects as I'm doing. Um, if you want to study an effect that's not subject based, in other words, it, you're not trying to study the shape and I don't know, proportions or structure of a particular subject, then pick something that you're comfortable drawing and painting. And since I was studying light and how light falls on objects, I just pick these things sort of randomly as a way to do that. Now you can see here oh, what I was talking about before creating this vignette. Um, now I'm doing it with a broader brush and I'm just adding deeper values and an outer sort of rim, which is what I'm referring to when I say a vignette. It's just light fall off. If light is pooling in the center, it's falling off as it gets further away from the subject. And some of that light uh, occlusion will happen even down towards uh, the edges of the rocks. So that's what you're seeing. And I'm just blending it out so I don't have hard edges. I'm even going to have some of the light, you'll see shortly, um, reflected off of those trees in the background. Kind of add to that staging style of light. And you can see I'm getting a good bit of light play already. I uh, The hardest part to, to do this in transparent watercolor would have been those those foliage bits. So really all I have back there is a base right now, since I did plan to put a lot of that in in gouache. But still working broad brush to uh, get a light fall off towards the outer edge. That includes going back and adding darker glazes to these in-between negative areas in between the tree trunks. Really in theatrical style lighting, fantasy style lighting, if you will, the deeper you can get the values that are in the shadows, uh, the more the light's going to pop. Very much influenced by not only theatrical type lighting, but cinematic type lighting. So now I'm starting in with the gouache, and we're going to start with the foliage. And it's just going to be some simple little brushy shapes, brushy leafy shapes, and I will build up those lighter values as we go. So the shapes that were there before with the transparent watercolor were just basically a base. Now we're going to start lighting up those trees, but just in a little region right around the rocks, almost as if there is something casting a shadow. Maybe a higher up canopy of leaves is casting a shadow on most of those trees, and only part of them are receiving lightfall. That's kind of what I'm studying here and the effect I'm trying to play with. And it's just really a lot of fun. Continuing to glaze in gouache and build it up gradually. I'm not one that likes to paint thickly with gouache. I like to glaze. It's just the way I like to do watercolor too. Uh, standard watercolor. Uh, so... You know, it's, it feels natural to me. It, it gives me a lot of adjustment opportunities. 
and you can just see the foliage how I brightened it up and I'm continuing to brighten up those patrons so we're starting to get the effect I think and now I'm going to bring uh, some gouache reinforcement to the highlights on the rock now I painted around the highlights enough that I've got a lot of light play there already so it's just again supporting strengthening that and maybe picking out a few other little highlight details And I'm not going to go too far out because I want there to be a noticeable fall off in light towards the outer edges. That's what I think just looks really, really cool. More brightening highlights on the foliage. And to further increase the light effect, it's helpful to go back in then and decide some areas where I can deepen shadows. And I felt like there were several, um, mainly in shadow areas, like cast shadows, like maybe where the rocks are casting shadows, or uh, in the undersides of the underbrush, where they occlude the light a little more. The more contrast sometimes you can get in some of these areas, the more it'll look like a brightly lit area. So that's what I'm doing. Supporting the shadows. Just bringing more focus, basically, into that center lighted area. We're going to uh continue to vignette now not so much with uh like washes but uh, we're gonna add uh, some more light on the floor of the forest there in front of the rocks and then also add darkening details on the floor around it and deepen some more shadows all adjustments adjustments here adjustments there you know squinting looking at it and saying hmm, yeah the effect would be a little bit better if this were darker, that were darker. One of the things I did want to do is open up the values in the negative space in that deeper part of the forest. I felt like maybe some of the light would have filtered through there. And rather than have all that equally dark, um, I'm lighting that up a little bit. And I liked uh, what that did to the scene. I felt like that just brought an overall um, light ring to the whole area you might say and that's pretty much going to be the last thing that i do aside from maybe a few tweaks but i really liked uh, how that kind of focused the light a little better pulled it out and we're just about done with this i think
this is where we're going to leave it. And for a nice small little light study, I'm pretty happy with that. Hope you all enjoyed this. Just to show you that uh, you don't have to do anything really ambitious to learn, to try things. Thanks everyone for watching. Thank you patrons for your support. We'll see everybody in the next video. Bye-bye.